I got to like his work much, much more than I had at the beginning. <laughs> I think like a lot, a lot of visitors to our exhibition, when I, when I was beginning, I had a um, sort of stereotyped image of his work. That's a 1930 mill scene with the little figures moving along in the foreground. And I just hadn't realised that he moved on so much. First thing was talk to colleagues at the Salford Art Gallery, who were absolutely marvellous and very, very encouraging. So if, if they had have been a bit doubtful about it or not been able to lend us the works or didn't think it was a terribly good idea for one reason or another, we might have sort of thought twice about how we were going to do it. But they, they thought they thought it was a, a really good idea and were just so enthusiastic and said that we could borrow anything we liked. From. Having got this sort of core of core of works, we then started to contact people that we knew had, had known Larry. And we were just really, really lucky. People actually did come on and say, well, yes, I've got, got a little Larry drawing. Would you like to come and have a look at it? I was intrigued to know what other people thought about that picture because I've discussed it with a lot of people over the, over the time that I've had it for three years. And, and I've got a number of different perspectives upon it. But I particularly wanted the perspectives of young people because of Larry's interest in young people. Colin Davis, who actually owned drawing called four people so we set up a little competition where we gave one or two simple questions and then asked people either to describe what they thought was happening in the picture or to write a short story we had over a hundred entries and the ages ranged from six to over 70 we had ten winners we wanted to have as many winners as possible um, and we've also got an overall winner who is a nine-year-old a simple story. Once there was two men who went to the manager for the zoo and asked for jobs. They got jobs as keepers of seals. They were very happy, but their wives were not. So the wives went to the goddess of animals and asked to be changed to seals. The goddess said... Yes, and now the families are together always. Though the husbands were a little puzzled when their wives disappeared. The end. I like it because it's like the, um, the sunset scene. I know. And, um, and it's like all nice colours, different colours of the hills. I usually do things like that. When you look at it, you can, you can think of wildlife in that movie. remembers at the age of eight drawing boats and so that's some an interest which was to stay with him for the rest of his life it seems to be sort of a, a cycle in, in in his interests it's there the whole time but at one period in his life something else might be overriding Long Stephen Larry was born in Manchester in 1887 the only child of Robert Larry a clerk and rent collector it is a, a painting that Larry did of him in 1910. And Elizabeth, who was a woman of refined taste and an accomplished pianist. The first lecture was actually done by Juliet Horsley, who prepared the exhibition. She looked at Larry's work as an artist, and obviously particularly his work done while he was in Sunderland. And then Shelley Rhoda, who's a journalist who's written a major biography of Larry, gave a talk on Larry the man. So we were really looking at the two key elements of Larry himself. So however simplified his, his figures in, in the paintings and drawings are, they're very, very well observed. It can be the simplest possible thing, just, just a, a, f a few lines, 
but the, the weight's in the right place, the proportions are, are right. And they, they mean something, these little tiny lines there with the, the dot for the head. The shoulders are actually that, that person's head is slightly stooped. It's a, it's, it's a real, real person. And a, a line drawing like the, the, the nude woman there, I think it expresses very clearly how he had started and, if you like, sort of laboured over, over drawing the, the human body. And he spent 25 years at art school doing just that, really, first of all from the antique and then from life. Sort of work, you know. I don't know why. Well, it's I think it's much to Oh, well, yes, this is what he is. Uh, this is what he's known about. I think he was surprised by the figure drawing, weren't you? That his original work is very good. You know, when he was young, it's tradition. Yeah. That's traditional yeah. type of art training over there. That's great. Um, I liked him as a man. Yes, mm -hmm. it's quite good because my son's doing for his A level of fresh lines. Right. That's why we. Oh, you're doing. You're an A level student, is that right? You're most certainly. I was wondering what you thought of the exhibition. I like his actual paintings, but the sketches I'm not at all impressed with, mm -hmm. to be honest with you. But, uh, Are you surprised by anything that you've seen? It is what I expected. Mm -hmm. But I can't see how someone who can draw like that, his self-portrait over there, can turn into a man who draws a self-portrait of a black pillar over there. You might when you're 83. <laughs> <laughs>
There's a very nice quote at the end of Juliet's lecture when she actually quotes Larry himself as saying, As an artist can't produce great art unless he has a philosophy. A man can't say something unless he has something to say. He can see things that a camera cannot see. A camera is a very wonderful piece of mechanism, but an artist has his feelings and he puts those feelings into any work he's doing. If he feels strongly for his subject, he will do it the better. I'm from Lancashire, so I, I feel just a sort of kindred spirit anyway, because it, it, it's my roots, you know, and I don't care what anybody says, if you come from an area, you have a greater understanding, perhaps, of, an, of another person from that area than anybody else does. The whole idea started in my mind on the walk, Saturday night, from Farmer to Bolton. And there was, in those days, there was a, a colliery at Kersley, and there was a thump, thump, thump of the engines as you went past that colliery. That was it, that's how it started. We've never done anything quite like Larry, because we never had the money to do it. Well, it was because we got the sponsorship from Miller Timber, and because they hadn't given sponsorship of this kind before, we were able to get a matching grant from ABSA, which is a government funded business sponsorship scheme. So that meant we could do a lot of things which we hadn't originally planned. The two videos of earlier television programmes made of Larry himself in the 1960s. But what I found interesting was that people used to sit not just through one video, but they'd also sit right through the second video. I'm, I'm not a lover of Howard, right? Mm -hmm. So watching the video or I thought he was... I could see why he did the pictures he's done. It, it explained a lot. I thought it was a very nice mm -hmm. Well, honest, maybe he's naive some sort of man. Um, but the video was the best part of it, actually. People should watch that first, then come in. Otherwise, they'll miss the whole point of it. <laughs> Some of the courses are aimed at adults, like Sally Sedgwick's four-day art course, which is quite intensive. After the course was over, we put quite a bit of the work on display because it helped to extend the exhibition. And we had sketchbooks from people like John, and we had big collages and work from people like Eileen. Well, I'll just make a little figure, maybe like... Perhaps not exactly as Larry would do it, but, you know, give it a little hat. Something very simple. You don't want to make it too uh, complicated. You know, you lose it. So, here's the energy. Right. And then I would just sprinkle it on like that. And obviously, if I take some of that away, I get left with a little figure. Himself suggested doing these big floor collages because they're a nice way of involving children, and you don't, it's a way around the children's own inhibitions about whether they're artists or not. Cutting up a piece of paper isn't art in the same way as being given a pencil and told to draw. And when we were thinking about activities for the Lao, it just seemed to me that kind of technique just lent itself so well to 
doing some of these big industrial scenes when he's actually built it up in layers, you know, through the through the painting. As Lowry came to the northeast, and it, what he thought of the northeast is in those pictures. So this is, what do you think about Sunderland? You know, what is Sunderland to you? We arranged the walks just to give people the kind of experience of what Sunderland was like. Obviously, it's changed from the way it was in the 1960s, but the shape of the river doesn't change. The basis of what Lowry was looking at and drawing is still there. Okay, the Lowry Walk will start upstairs in the exhibition gallery. Larry did in the East End, almost all the buildings he covered have now, has now been demolished. But we'll go down, we've got a model of this pub uh, in the Sunderland story, and we'll have a look at that next. Okay. Half Moon Inn, it was demolished, and the, the tiled facade was uh, exported to the USA, and this building as well was demolished. So Larry's got a value in recording what uh, Sunderland was like in the 1960s. And it wasn't quite as, as elaborate as the of the houses, but it had similar kind of features to it. So again, it's something you know, the unusual that catches Larry's eye. We'll now cross over and turn left This was his favourite area, the Lampton Stage. And then he said, I, I like Sunderland for the, the shipping and shipbuilding and the countryside at, at the back. Everything that becomes derelict, we're just about to be pulled down. He said, The passing of the William Powell, a public house, a half demolished house, a Methodist church. I detested it so much I did three of it. <laughs> He likes about Roque, just really walking along the promenade on an autumn or winter day, not meeting anybody, and seeing the waves break up across the railings onto the promenade, or on very rough days, breaking on to, 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 to the road. I think we've been around all the surviving building sites that Larry drew in Sunderland, and this is obviously the appropriate place to finish where Larry would outside the sea bed. Well, 
Welcome to the video animation and music workshop. As you see, we're all getting down to it here, experimenting with all sorts of images and all sorts of sounds. Polly? Press it off. So, that was us, at least the bits of us we thought were most important. Now let's get to the most important person of all, which is, of course, Mr. Lowry. And our next job was to look around the exhibition and home in on any bits and pieces in the pictures that intrigued us. All sorts of things had all sorts of possibilities. This is the story of Larry the Shark who went to the sea for a bit of a luck. little film and remember this is everybody's first go at animation to make Lowry's paintings come to life everybody had a look at the boats and the fishes and the birds and so on and then made their own out of cut paper as you can see in plasticine and pastel and the trick is to move a bit of pastel or cut out or whatever and then record one and two and seconds of video move something else Great. Record one and two and seconds of video, move something else and so on. And when you've recorded all the pictures, add the sound. <laughs> Magic. could be related to, it might be Eric Sarti because of his simplicity. Everything I mean, in his work was always sort of beautifully proportioned and beautifully structured, mm. like Lowry. You know, yeah. there's nothing out of place in it. It's very simple and fairly limited sort of range of colours of sounds he's using. The best music, it's like I'm always saying, is simple. <laughs> simple and uh, brilliant. Like the olden days, it's got all the olden days. Like the olden days, it's got all the olden days. Like the olden days, it's got all the olden days. Like the olden days, it's got all the olden days. Like the olden days, it's got all the olden days. Like the olden days, it's got all the olden days. Like the olden days, it's got all the olden days. Like the olden days, it's got all the olden days. Like the olden days, it's got all the olden days. Like the olden days, it's got all the olden days. Like the olden days, it's got all the olden days. Well, as I say, that was very popular, and I got the crowds in for that. Mm. Of course, never thought that the Lowry one would be anywhere near it, but as I say, it's not the first thing. Record figures we got, 1,500 a day. Another curious thing is that um, getting a lot of children, groups, bringing grandmothers, bringing grandchildren, and family groups, and all. And I think a lot of the kids can identify with some of the so-called childlike ones. Dog in the sky. How many other dogs are there? Well, in the world, 
the expression, Lady Basie, and she's the art critic for the Times. She re recognises it as artistic merit of it. If they like them a lot, they think it's clear. But if they do want to still talk about them... <laughs> this has been, in my opinion, well marketed, to use a jargon. It's been an advertiser a lot on TV and uh, in the press, radio and so on. Much more than any previous exhibition, in my experience, and it seems to have caught on. Yeah. Thank you very much, ma'am. Okay, I like all the oil paintings and things. Because right. uh, I'm, I'm interested in you, see. I'm doing, like, design. I've just done design in college. <coughs> My brother, David, was sort of said he knew what the oil paintings were. We stood and looked at them. Very good, actually. Yeah. No particular one you liked? Oh, um, uh, You like the ones with the ships on? All oh, the families, like, sort of, like, sea and things like that, you know? So we've got lots of pictures of ships in the house. Brilliant. <laughs> it was like, they were saying, oh, Dad could have been on that ship, you know? That's right. <laughs> Special reason for being here, actually. Uh -huh. What's... Well, I'm bringing my husband up to see it. He's disabled. And I came just to scout out the area and see whether I could manage him here. And is access so, OK? Yes, it's fine. No problems. So, so we come from Nottingham, so it's a long way to come. Yes. I'm from this area, of mm -hmm. Yeah, is that what's drawn you, do you think? Is it that? No, no, my husband's a painter. He's the one who wants to see the exhibition. He likes this part of the world since I introduced him to it because it's got what Larry liked, industry and sea, together. And it's a unique combination, you know. Old Hartlepool and the docks are behind there. That's it. They run into the docks there. And where would you sit with your grandma? We always sat by St Hilda's Church, which is a bit further along. He's tall. Mm -hmm. He's tall in sea. He can swim. He mm -hmm. can swim in the sea. Right. Black, black, black. Let's have a look at him. See. So, Missy's a coloured person. Here he is. <laughs> oh. What is he? Missy's coloured. He's he looks like he's got a beard. Yeah. Yeah. He likes black. black. He looks like he likes black. He wears black all the time. He does, yes. He's not a coloured person. He wears black clothes. Yes. Is that him? Yes. Do you say he's got a beard? He does. It's something I've always wanted to see, and that's what I put on there. A friend of mine died, and we went to a funeral. We went back to the house for refreshments. And, you know, when you have your chimney, and there's an alcove at each side, in one alcove she had all flowers, just small prints. But uh, it was so interesting. And then just previously to that, uh, the Christmas before she died, we saw that ballet. And I thought, Absolutely. Because the way they put it on, you know, they put you, the, showed you the picture, and then the picture gradually faded, and there was the live bodies, and they just, I thought, oh, that valley. And you see, I'd seen that valley at the Christmas, and I'd been to a friend's funeral and seen all their friends. And I've come to it because of Edna, really. and happened for about a year. And the idea was really to get our name across it so people would understand what we're doing here and uh, what we're trying to achieve. And, I mean, the fact that there's been so many people coming around the exhibition has uh, been you know, a verification of doing what we've been doing. It's been worthwhile. Oh, yeah. There was plenty of criticism, plenty of compliments, and, uh, but it provoked a lot of thoughts and a lot of talk. And that's what we wanted. Thanks very much. Okay, right.